Hello everyone, Nadim here with uh, PCSN. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you like the content that we create. Um, that way you'll get notified and it helps. Uh, it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm. Uh, hit the bell button. I'm going to talk about uh, something that has uh, come up um, you know, recently in a, in a you know, couple of times at client sites. And it's usually, the question comes from the IT admins or people in a technical role, right? So uh, not necessarily C-level team, but more um, the technical team that does the implementation piece. And the question is, hey, we've decided we're going to migrate all of our data to SharePoint. What's the best way to migrate data? Companies have used third-party applications. We've used third-party applications in the past. For example, you know, MigrationWiz or you know, Skykick. Yeah, there's a bunch of apps out there that you can use. However, Microsoft bought another company and they started offering that product for free in the admin center. So that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit. So if you go, if you log into your admin center, so, you know, right now, this is the standard admin center. Everybody's familiar with this. Uh, on the left-hand side, we go into show all admin centers and then go into SharePoint. Now, this piece did not used to be there. If for some reason it does not show up in your tenant, if it's maybe a new tenant, give it some time, it should start showing up. So on the left-hand side, if you go into migration, and there is a migration piece. Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire migration piece. Uh, actually, I might be able to log into one of uh, the migrations that's going on this weekend and, and show you. Um, comment below if you want me to show you, I can, um, uh, but otherwise I'll just go through the motion of how to set up the migration. So, so in this case, you'll notice that there are several options to migrate. So normally when people want to migrate from their local shares, it, they're just going to use the first option, which is file share. So you click on get started. It takes you into the interface for migration. And here's the big steps that you need to do here. So first of all, you want to download the agent. This agent goes on your file server. This agent actually uses UNC file path. So it, it uses a network path as opposed to looking for a local drive. But the reason I say install it on a file server is because then everything stays within that file server. Traffic does not have to go from one file server over to the network to another machine and then over onto the internet to sync up into SharePoint. So it, it improves things a little bit. Now, once you in, download and install the agent, uh, you want to add a source path. Uh, so once you install the agent, it will start talking to Microsoft and you'll be able to then add a source path. Add all the source paths that you want. So let's say you have uh, a, a share called shared stuff, another share called my stuff, uh, another share called their stuff. You want to add each one of those shares. So once you add all those shares, you'll then be able to click the scan content icon. So first you want to scan everything that you have. If the depth is too long now, that catches people um, without warning is uh, a lot of times you have a share, but maybe you have a lot of folders under folders and then long file names. And sometimes that whole path might get too long. It will tell you all that. It will also give you options when you go into my migration. So once you add, uh, once you scan all the content, you'll have all your paths down here, all your shared folders. Uh, you can select one or all of them and choose the option to send them to uh, move them into migration. Once you move them into migration, they'll start showing up here. And before you actually start each migration, you can set the settings for each migration task itself. The idea is so at the root level, you might have set, hey, replace all unsupported characters with an underscore. But for a certain share, maybe you want to use a different character. Maybe you want to use just a space. It will let you do that down here when you click the run button after selecting one of those tasks. So so that's it. First, you download the agent, then you do a scan, then you do a migrate. Now, what if you have a lot of data and, and you're on a deadline and you need to get that data migrated fast? 
then what I would recommend is you have multiple agent machines on your network. So, because the agents, the way the agent works is when it's working on one share or, or one uh, task that's listed here, it is only going to work on that one task until it's complete. And if there's a lot of stuff in there, it might take a while for, for it to complete. So it's not going to spin up additional threads to do the other tasks. So what you can do in this case is have multiple machines on your network and multiple machines running the agent, and then you can use those machines running the agent to have multiple shares being replicated at the same time. This is the way to do it if you have machines that do not support, for example, with the OneDrive app. Right. So if you have, let's say, some servers that are Windows 2012 R2, you cannot run the new OneDrive client on there. And sometimes, I mean, I, I don't know if you might have better luck, but sometimes it's hard to even find older clients to be able to run on Windows 12 R2. So in this case, you can use this tool. The agent installs on Windows 12 R2 just fine. Uh, I've done it myself. Uh, sit back and relax because. The agent is going to do its thing. It's going to replicate. It's going to show you how much percent it's done. And when it's done, it will let you know if there's any skipped or errors or anything like that. It will let you know. The beauty of doing it this way is that you can also have it uh, keep your permissions. Yes. If you have different permissions for different users and they're pretty complex, it's not easy. Hey, agent will preserve those permissions and it's an option so you can preserve it or you cannot preserve it and reset permissions as you're migrating that data works really well give it a shot if you're migrating data into sharepoint or onedrive this works well for both of those options if you have questions feel free to reach out hopefully it helps you out makes your life a little easier we'll see you next time everybody have a great day